Hello and welcome back to FX Suite. Today we're going to be taking a look at the top gainers of the week and the top losers of the week and see how the coins are positioned uh, based on TA. Right, so if you enjoy the content that we put out, please head on over to our YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button and also click on the bell icon to stay updated on the hottest trends in the cryptocurrency market. You can also follow us on Twitter at FXS Crypto and you can uh, follow me personally on Twitter at Mangeko with the zero at the end. So uh, the top gainers uh, this week, at least the top three gainers uh, that we're going to be looking at is Waves, IMX, and Zcash. All right, so let's start with Waves. All right, so I've already marked out a couple of things here. So from a daily time frame, as you can see here, uh, the, there was a nice pump that took place after the after double bottom that was formed here. So the price rallied 277 percent in the last month i mean this is an amazing run-up but right, honestly like this coin i this is the first time i'm looking at this coin uh even even with this uh, 277 percent upswing right the coin doesn't look i mean although it might seem overbought it, it, do, it isn't really mainly because of these uh demand zones that was formed uh before the price actually rallied up right the demand zones between these impulse moves is really interesting and important for now, we have uh, the immediate demands on here extending from roughly 21 to 24 dollars, which is going to be major support. And beyond, that, if we if waves right fails to hold above this demand zone, that is, if we get a daily candlestick close below 21.89, it would invalidate this demand zone. In which case, we have another demand zone here extending from roughly 16 dollars to 18, roughly 19 dollars. Right and Although there was like a massive impulsive move here, there could have been that there was a really good chance for price to have a fair value gap, and there is a fair value gap present here. So that's another thing that you gotta look at, right? So there is a decent amount of a fair value gap present here. So if we get a daily candlestick close below twenty one point eight, we could see the price quickly fall down to eighteen or roughly nineteen dollars. So as Assuming the price bounces of the initial demand zone here, right? So assuming we get something like this, then the 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 upside target or the upside potential for waves is cap so roughly around thirty five dollars, mainly because of the equal highs that were formed here are roughly thirty four point seven seven, right? As you can see here, the first week, second week, and the third week, so there was a literally triple. Not triple tap setup. There was a triple retest of this thirty four point seven seven uh, resistance level. So the next level that the market makers are going to target or focus on is for the price to move above this and collect the this buy stop liquidity resting above this. So the people or the traders who shorted uh, waves around here have their buy stops present above it. So that is the next target that the market makers are going to focus on. So. If I were to measure this, it would indicate that the price has roughly 40, 40 to 42 percent upswing, although it's rallied like to 77 percent in the last month. So this is something that you gotta keep your eyes, like keep keep your eyes on, right? So from a bearish perspective, that is, if we get a daily candlestick close below 21.8, then there's gonna be a swift downswing to. 18 so this would be a 13 percent drop and then we have uh, a nice cushion from 16 to 19 dollars where the price is gonna have another uh, the bulls uh, would have another chance for the for them to attempt a bull run or a rally to 34 dollars right but in an extremely bearish case if we get daily cancel close below 16.7 dollars then we would see another 20% drop and then this time we're gonna waves is gonna drop down to $30 right so this is where some decent support comes in so two pockets and two demand zones and the downside cap at roughly $13.3 and the upside cap at $35 that's that's the current state of phase despite it being the top gainer last week Right, so now let's take a look at IMX. All 
Right, so the, not a lot of data for IMX to go on. So but still uh, on a daily time frame, I mark out two important uh, levels, which is the daily supply zone here, extending from 2.2 to 2.5. And the daily demand zone here, extending from 1.47 to 1.60. So let's take a look at it from a four hour time frame. Uh, as you can see on a four hour time frame, this candlestick here, which was a 35% gain candlestick here, created a, a fair early gap extending from 1.13 to 1.42. So that is going to be the focus. If the price you know, manages to produce a daily candlestick close below 1.47. For now, I think it's it's done going up. We could see like uh, whatever's left, uh, it, it's going to be just fumes to collect liquidity resting above these eagle highs found here at roughly 1.965. So, so we might see move something like this and then I'm going to come to this level. So from the current position, you can see anywhere between 16 to 17% upswing. And if you're lucky, uh, we could probably see IMX head up to the daily supply zone's lower limit, which is at $2.27. And we test that. Right, that would be a 34% upswing for IMX. And the next coin, the next top gainer is Zcash. The coin that has slumbered for quite some time. Right, so from a daily time frame, I've marked out two important levels, which is the equal highs formed by roughly 157 and the equal lows formed at 82.9. Right, from the looks of it, what I see is ZEC, Zcash, is forming a range, right? And the range extends from 82 to 161. And what I'm expecting, so usually how the ranges play out is price sets up a range and then the price either deviates the range high and then makes a one for the range low and then goes higher. So we're going to see something like this or we could see a sweep of the range low followed by a sweep of the range high. But either way, uh, we are going to get a sweep of both these equal highs and equal lows. That means you have an opportunity to short Zcash at 157 and an opportunity to long Zcash at roughly $82, right? So even, even, even the price was around $80 uh, during the 24th Jan. Uh, the price didn't sweep below it, right? This this was a good chance for the price to sweep below it. If we had gotten a sweep around 24th Feb, then I would be long on Zcash, right? In which case, uh, I would have marked out this daily demand zone. Daily Right, so the market was daily supply zone, and I would uh, be looking at a daily candlestick close below about 167. Right, so in that case, the the TA would have looked something like this, where we close above it and then make a run for the highs around here, which is a 302. Right, for now, uh, that's not the case. We, I am expecting a retest of the 50 retracement level here at 122, which would be a 21 percent drop. And if we're lucky, we could see a 42% drop all the way down to the $82.7, which is the, the range low. And uh, hopefully a sweep below that to kickstart a new uptrend. So that's uh, my take on Zcash, which completes the analysis for the top gainers. Now let's take a look at the top three losers, which is Phantom, Alice, and Alpha. So for Phantom, Phantom is in a very uh, bad spot, if you will. Uh, the demand zone here extending from roughly 1.15 to 1.38 was breached yesterday as the price closed below that. And the next support level that I'm looking at is 0 0.96 or rough, around, around $1. $1 is a little too high. 
but somewhere around 0, 0.96 is the next support level that I'm looking at. Right? I'm expecting the price to see some sort of a push reaction around here, probably some sort of consolidation, which eventually leads up to a move higher, which tries to go above roughly $2, or at least set up another swing high at $2. So that would be a 110% upswing, which is more than double. This is the best case scenario. Uh, this is me being optimistic, but considering the, you know, the Andre, Andre's uh, move out of the Phantom ecosystem, uh, I'm not sure how the project's gonna perform. So if we get a daily cancel close or a breakdown of the support level here at 0.96, uh, the only support level that we see here is this demand zone extending from 0 0.46 to 0 0.67. So from the support level, this would be a 37% drop. So uh, the upside, so basically this is a three-day demand zone. Let me just mark that out. And this is now a, this is the daily demand zone, which has been invalidated. So yeah, the upside for Phantom cap are roughly two dollars, and the downside for Phantom extends anywhere from 0.46 to 0.60. So that's my take on Phantom, which is the top loser for the last week. So the next coin is Alice. So uh, I've marked out a couple of uh, support levels or resistance levels here. Uh, so let's talk about this level here, 9.35, price bounced off of it uh, once, twice, and then finally breached it and flipped it with support or resistance level. The first retest and a flip of the resistance level failed. Projection from another support here at 6.26, closed below that on 5th March, and now it's trying to probably retest this resistance level. Right, so what I'm looking at uh, is from a daily time frame, you can see there's a demand zone that was formed on 5th July. The price respected it, although the wick, although it wicked below that, the candlestick still close above it, which means the demand zone is still valid, uh, mainly because uh, this impulse move originating of the retest of the demand zone rallied roughly 309%, which not only broke the market structure of these two swing highs formed here on 15 July and 27 July, it also broke the swing high formed here on March 17th, all the way up to all the way up to 5th May. So this is really good and interesting upswing. And so the if you go back to the origin, this demand zone here extending from 4.31 to 4.88 is a, an extremely crucial level. And I'm expecting to see quite a bullish reaction off of it. Right. And this level here is also interesting. Not level, but this uh price action that you see here was a triple tap setup where price formed the first tap, deviated below the range low, and then prematurely formed the third tap, which led to a massive upswing. So uh, the, the downside for Alice is capped anywhere from $4.3 to $4.8. And the upside from a conservative standpoint is capped at 6.26. And if we're lucky, we could probably get a retest of this, uh, the eight dollar level. And in a highly bullish case, uh, you can see it head up to nine point three five. So that pretty much sums up my analysis for uh, Alice. So let's take a look at the next top loser of the last week, which is Alpha. Quite similar to uh, Alice, I've marked out a couple of support levels here for one support level here, basically 0 0.147 for Alpha and two support levels which were flipped into resistance level after the price went below that. Right, the, the most recent one at 0 0.3, you can see how uh, good these support levels are. It was a support here, price bounced quite a few times here on 22nd Jan, we respected the support level respect the support level here again on 14th Feb, and the price finally breached below it on probably 20th Feb. A retest of that support level of the newly flipped resistance level failed, and the price dropped. Something similar took place here as well. 
price slipped, a retest failed, and now the price is open to a drop. But from a 3D perspective, we can also expect the price to see at least some sort of a bullish reaction come here on 0 0.244. As for the upside, I don't see a lot of upside mainly because of uh, the what the price action is done uh, from roughly 22nd Jan, right? There's quite a bit of resistance level here. So even if you, even if Alice, yeah, even if Alpha, embarks on an uptrend, right? We could see it cap at 15%, which is 0 0.30, and 0 0.358, which would indicate a 36%. That's that's where I feel the upside for alpha is capped. Beyond this, although this is a very uh, good support level here, which is 0 0.244, a breach of this could, uh, we could see alpha head down to 0 0.14 from the support level here, which is 0 0.244, it would be a nasty 39% drop. So yeah, that's that's how the top three gainers and losers perform. Uh, among the top three losers, I don't see a lot of uh, you know uh, opportunity for the the losers, especially Alpha, which is uh, this year, and Alice also kind of did not show a lot of con conviction with its price action. Uh, although the same cannot be said for FTM, which was a different story. I am expecting some sort of a bullish reaction uh, around uh, 0 0.96, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be patient. So basically all these top three uh, losers are okay, they aren't that great. As for the, the gainers, Waves looks really interesting despite its amazing performance for the last 18 days, right? So Waves has a lot of uh, Lots to offer. Same goes with IMX. It's, it's nearing the ZD's uh, demand zone, right? So again, ZDC also is forming a nice range, which which means it's uh, it's, it's easier uh, for a swing trader to look at this coin and be really excited, you know, because it's it's, it's range bound and uh, range bound trading is really interesting. It doesn't involve a lot of complications. So all the three top gainers are really good. And the top three losers aren't really looking that great except for Phantom, which I'm gonna be keeping a close eye on. So that concludes uh, this session of analysis. If you enjoyed this weekly review of the gainers and losers, uh, provide your feedback in the comment section and please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.